What's up, everybody? Frosty here. Got another hand of the week for you. Uh, this hand is fresh. Played it today at a 6 max 200 NL table. Um, I don't know if there's really a particular theme to this hand or not. I suppose you could say the theme could be not overplaying fairly big hands in certain spots. Uh, but mostly it was just an interesting hand, I guess. Um, I talked about it with a poker buddy on Skype for a little bit. And I'm still not like 100% convinced in, in the optimal line to take. Uh, but I'm very strongly leaning towards uh, one direction, I guess you could say. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. Um, I'll just be talking about what I, what my thoughts are on each street and what I think of everyone's ranges in the hands. But it's going to open in a fairly standard manner. We've got a reg opening under the gun. Um, only had a few hundred hands on this guy, but he was opening a UTG 24%, uh, which is very loose even for a six max um <clears throat> so i think my options here are just flatting or three betting i think both are fine um i think three betting is fine because this guy folded into a lot of three bets too something like 80 percent even though it's a fairly small sample so i think it's just going to be immediately profitable and probably the better play with two regs behind so i don't have to worry about getting squeezed and um i don't have to just like fold to C bets on a lot of flops. Uh but anyways the the player in this hand in the small blind is quite fishy, so I think it there's just way more value in just calling, especially because he only opened two and a half X. Uh just calling and trying to hit a set against the looser player and trying to get paid off and stack him. Uh rather than just three bet and hope to win eight bucks and risk getting four bet. So not much to say about that. I call small blind calls, rag calls and we see a flop of king, 10, 6 of clubs. So we got bottom set. <clears throat> uh, we're pretty happy. We're not like crazy happy, but we're moderately happy at this point. And the fishier small blind is going to check. And the other reg in the hand is going to uh, donk out. Um, I looked at this guy's... Um, at this guy's stats afterwards and saw that he had only donked once in about 15 instances and when he did donk he had bottom set so I obviously didn't know that at the time but even still I was putting him on a fairly strong range I think that in general people lead fairly strong and especially four ways like they're pretty much never gonna have any air so I think he's pretty much gonna have like all sets here he's gonna have like lots of mid lean flushes make a lot of sense um, as for like, as for like any air, like I don't think he's ever gonna have like complete air. Uh, he's probably gonna have like queen jack with a club as like one of his worst hands in his range. Uh, or he's gonna have like just like king x without a club. I think that would also donk lead sometimes. I don't think it's a great play. I'd probably prefer just check folding those hands. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody just donk out like king queen of hearts or something like that, or maybe that squeeze is pretty maybe like king jack offsuit or king queen offsuit uh or maybe like king 10 i guess that makes some sense too um so we see a lead and then we see a call from the original razor uh and then it's on us so yeah we're not loving bottom set too much here like uh i think the end of the gun razor is gonna have gonna have some slow plays gonna have some nut flushes some some fairly high flushes gonna have like all sets except for pocket sixes obviously uh gonna have like jacks and queens with the club <clears throat> uh gonna have like queen jack off with the club like most players won't have queen jack off in their opening range from under the gun but you gotta remember this guy's opening 24 percent and queen jack off definitely falls into that range i think um especially with a weaker player in the small blind so he's gonna have like pretty strong um drawing hands if he doesn't already have like a made flusher set um so yeah it's pretty strong so i don't think we can raise here i think raising just kind of isolates herself against better hands i think if we raise and, and the money keeps piling in we're pretty much screwed so um i think raising's out of the question uh but with that said i don't think we can fold either i think um like i said there's definitely hands in both the ranges that we beat slash crush um and we still kind of want to induce the small blind to come along for the ride as well uh, like I don't think the small blind is going to be calling complete garbage here, like I, or, or not even like garbage, but like, well yeah, pretty much garbage. Like I don't think they're going to be calling like seven, eight of hearts. Um, but I do think they're going to be calling with a lot of hands that have some reverse implied odds, uh, 
and hench that are already pretty much destroyed. Like I think he's gonna be calling with like ten nine with like the nine of clubs. Gonna be calling like all kings. Uh, gonna be calling like all queen jacks. Um, probably calling like pocket sevens, pocket eights with the club. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe even wider. Maybe like ten jack offsuit. Like you really have no idea. So there's a lot of incentive to induce the small blind to come along too. So uh, I think this is pretty standard to be honest. I think it's pretty much just a mandatory call at this point. And the small blind does come along, and we see the ace of spades on the turn. So, pretty bad turn card. Um, I mean, this this is kind of just the problem. There's just not going to be many great turn cards. Um, the only card we're we're happy on is the six. Like, we're we're, we're happy-ish if the board pairs, uh, but we're still not going to be able to get a ton of money in uh, and feel feel too good about it. So, uh, but this is. Uh, particularly particularly bad turn card just because all the queen jacks get there um so what happens small blind checks um original docker checks here so i think he would probably probably continue betting his queen jacks and, and medium flushes and I'm not sure what he would do with the set he might check a set um but i think his range becomes significantly weaker at this point uh, and probably consists of just a lot of give ups, like a lot of give ups with like King X, like even two pair probably just gives up at this point. Um, and then the original Razor leads. So I'm not, I'm not happy at all at this point. Like I think, like I said, I think he still has like some slow play not flushes um, that he just wants to bet for value at this point. Maybe some mid lean flushes that he feels like super pumped about now that the original guy checked and queen jack gets there so he can just go ahead and bet that for value and be pretty comfortable with it i, I didn't think he would bet sets as much um because if he did have like pocket kings or pocket tens um he's kind of over repping his hand now that we're four way to the turn and queen jack is so obviously out there um but i felt like his range is probably pretty strong at this point and i'm still not like super sure that the original donker is giving up and like i'm not even sure i beat the fish anymore because i think the fish has a lot of queen jacks um and i think he has a lot of like low to medium flushes as well so like i think i should just be folding here as like somewhat ridiculous as it seems um because the problem is like even if we boat up like like we don't really know what to do um if the river comes a king or a ten like somebody could have quads or, or a better full house and we're pretty much never getting paid by a flush if, if the board pairs like so, like it's so obvious somebody has a set um and just happens just happens to be me so i really think if the board pairs we're just not getting much action from worse um so yeah i just think i just think not a lot of good things are going to happen on the river so i think this is going to be a fold even though i think i think like like one to two percent of regs would ever fold this in game um but i really do think it's correct just given people's ranges at this point um but like a fish i call no i mean it's it's pretty debatable like i said i'm not 100 percent convinced that it's that it is correct to fold here um just because if people do have a straight if they do have a flush like yeah we're not we're probably not going to get paid if, if the board pairs in the river but you know we're pretty much getting odds to to make the call just to see that happen anyways um but the real danger comes when somebody does have a, a set of tens and then the board pairs and then you know we face a huge river bet like we're never folding so i think this is kind of a spot that is like not only are we like behind like 100 percent here but even if the board pairs there's definitely a reasonable chance of um of losing more money so the reverse implied odds are definitely there i think this is just a fold uh fishier player folds original player was just giving up original donker i should say uh so we're heads up to the river and the river's the jack of clubs um so we don't boat up we pretty much beat nothing at this point like literally nothing um <laughs> yeah there's like never any hands we beat here that i can think of um and somewhat surprising the reg checks so i mean i talked about my buddy on skype about turning his hand into a bluff and 
he thought it was a decent idea, and I, and I think it has a lot of merit. But I just like didn't think, I don't expect like sets to bet that turn. Like I said, I think I think betting that set there, or, sorry, betting that turn there with the set is like a fairly big overplay of your hand and not just not that great. So yeah, there's that to worry about the the fact that I don't think he has many sets, so he he probably has a flush. Uh, but if you want to approach the hand from a different angle too, I, I would expect like flush is just to bet here, like. Like, from my opponent's eyes, like, it looks like I have, like, maybe, um, like, obviously a set, or, like, maybe, um, maybe a straight, with, or maybe, like, a middle flush. Um, so, it looks like I'm, looks like if I have, like, a good hand, I'm probably just not folding. Um, like, obviously I'll fold a set, but, like, if I have, like, if I have, like, queen jack with, like, the queen of clubs, um, like, I'm just not folding to a bet, I guess. Um... And there's just not too many hands that I, I'm going to be, like, betting myself for value here. So, like, I'm obviously just going to be checking behind with sets and, like, probably going to be checking behind. Like, if I'm in there with, like, eight, nine of clubs, like, I'm just going to be, like, checking back. So, so it's kind of weird. Like, I, I would expect him to usually bet here with a big flush, um, but I would not expect him to bet the turn very often with the set. So, I think it's kind of a risky play to turn your hand into a bluff here. I mean, you have to, you pretty much have to shove. Like, if you, if you bet, like, half pot or something like that, uh, you kind of risk getting looked up by by a bigger set, um, and I, I mean I would probably never I would probably just shove here with all my value hands. So you're kind of like risking a little bit more than the pot um, when you don't really know what the villain has. Uh, you know either either has a set or a flush, um, but yeah I mean it just he just looks more nutted. Like I I was kind of thinking like okay maybe he just has like he could even have a royal flush like he could have like ace queen of clubs and maybe he has like all the blockers so he's like well I'm never getting called if I bet here um, because he just can't have a good flush so I might as well check to you know let him spaz out let him turn a hand to a bluff and I think that's fairly reasonable line of thinking so I decided to chicken out and not turn my hand into a bluff and unfortunately uh, I should have because he showed me pocket kings, <laughs> and I pretty much can make that hand fold every time by shoving. But I, I just think his turn bet's pretty bad. Like for all the reasons I, I, I explained earlier, I mean it worked out perfectly in this case. So um, I like, think it's, it's never going to be like terrible because like you always have outs. But like if he bets that turn, and and uh, I mean that's kind of like when I'm probably going to pull the trigger if I'm slow playing a flush myself, uh, and I, and I raise him like he's. He, he can't fold and he's always behind 100 percent and the fish is never folding queen jack and and he has it a lot um and i have i mean to be honest i don't really have that many queen jack because i pretty much just have queen jack suited um by calling there so i don't know if he's thinking that much in depth but yeah he doesn't really have to worry about me having queen jack on that turn but i think he has to worry about having the donk the donker have queen jack too sometimes so i don't know it's not like I don't think it's terrible to bet the turn, but I I just I don't know I think you're overplaying your hand a bit, um, and it made me think that he was more like set deficient and more flush heavy, which is why I didn't want to bluff that river. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that one. Uh, it was definitely interesting, definitely non-standard to say the least. But uh, but yeah, uh, let me know in the comments um, uh, what would uh if you guys would do anything differently i guess um or yeah or if you agree with my thought process and and think just folding the turn is the best um which is still what i like i think so anyways uh yeah this was frosty with another hand of the week for you and i'll catch you guys later take care